Oh, welcome back, everyone. So uh, this session will be uh, pretty much deep dive into the uh, demonstrations and how the uh, tool set, the building blocks of stream uh, product by WSO2 can be utilized. We will be discussing that. So in this session, myself and my colleague Mohan will cover the most of the aspect of streaming SQL. So may I know who were not in last three sessions? One, two, three, yeah. So it's worth to like spend a couple of things before getting into the uh, deep dive, right? Because uh, it might be kind of repetitive, but I, ha I want to make sure that everything is covered for everyone. So the agenda is uh, nothing but uh, stream apps and stream processor. Especially we will be uh, concentrating on WSO2 uh, stream processor and how it will be utilized to create these streaming apps. So streaming application, uh, the, for us to defining uh, an application that provide analytical operators to orchestrate data flow, cal calculate analytics, and detect patterns on event data from multiple and live data sources to allow developers to build application that sense, think, and act in real time. So this definition is by Forrester, but there are many challenges for this uh, definition. Uh, in the past, what we have seen is you had to write a lot of different codes, and you have to deal with uh, complex deployment, and it's very tricky to handle with more than, one to, more than five, six uh, nodes. And inability to change fast, you can't do any changes in the middle. So those are the challenges that what we have seen over the time. And we were talking about stream analytics for last three sessions. So we will be collecting from various uh, uh, sensors, applications, and services uh, the data and fe fed into the anal uh, analytical profile and run through the streaming SQL and produce uh, the digital assets like APIs, actions, or it can be alerts or dashboards. So as a solution, what we have came up with is a streaming SQL and the graphic editor. Uh, and very importantly, to solve the deployment complexity, we are enabling with two node minimum uh, high available deployment. And it's also possible to scale beyond that with the distributed deployment. Further, we also provide templated SQL scripts and drag and drop UI functionalities for your complex SQL uh, stream processing. So as a result, we are coming up with the WSO2 stream processor, which is uh, lightweight, lean, and cloud-native uh, product. Uh, easy to learn is, uh, streaming SQL. Uh, how many of you know SQL? Pretty much everyone. So it's pretty easy. So we, Mohan will uh, walk you through with each and every uh, syntax notation how, how that, that can be utilized in the streaming SQL. And the product itself, very high performance uh, analytics just with uh, two uh, nodes, uh, nodes that provide you high, avail high available. Uh, at the same time, we also provide native support for streaming machine learning. Uh, at the same time, there is a long-term aggregation without batch analytics. That's uh, one of the very uh, awesome features that I believe. <coughs> at the same time, the, uh, in order to scale that, you, uh, you don't need to struggle a lot. We are providing the enough tools for that. So it's hi highly scalable with the exactly one processing capability. Tools for the developments and monitoring also provided as a part of the uh, product uh, deliverable. At the same time, the tools for the business user also provided so they can write their own rules and they don't need to struggle with the streaming SQL and they don't need to learn anything on that. So the WSO2 stream processor consists of various profiles. One of that is the editor and studio, uh, which provide the developer uh, environment for your developer who is going to implement these applications. Uh, and resource node will be a part of the worker and resource profile. Uh, and it consists of dashboards. Uh, it can be a part of the portal for the business da dashboard. It can be a business rules manager. So it's a management console for a business user. Uh, there is one more dashboard for the status. So you can monitor the 
uh, status of the activities in the dashboard. Further, there is one more uh, profile for managing the jobs and for the distributed processing. So there are multiple uh, users uh, uh, that consist of open source users and the uh, subscription users. Uh, and there are a lot of use cases. If you are participating in the customer tracks, you can hear a lot of different stories from uh, our WSC2 Analytics users. So in order to the uh, demonstration and the uh, tutorial, we would like to set up a, a very simple use case. And it has an online shopping application. Uh, very simple use case, the uh, sweet factory management. There are uh, the raw materials coming into the factory, and then the, fa the, um, the sweets are uh, manufactured, and it's delivering to the different store, and we are selling these sweets in the store. But this, for this use case, there are multiple aspect or the uh, use cases that you can see from one single place. So one very important thing is you monitor the supply and production and the uh, sales, and you make the optimization and resource utilization uh, on top of the monitored items. And then also you detect various different um, alerts and failures uh, with the predict demand. Um, further, you also pro make the manage processing rules online and visualize that in the real-time performance. So we have to start from basics. So as you already know, there are three aspects of the uh, stream processing. One, you should collect the information, and then you analyze that. And the third, you report that. For that, uh, in order to receive or collect the information, you have to define your stream, how that's going to be. And then you have to configure the input uh, event sources, and you have to map your data uh, schemes with the event mappings, and you also have to define your uh, maps, mappings. Once you receive the messages or receive the events, then you will start to analyze on top of these sources. So for that, we, you will learn about stream processing, and uh, you will also learn about how long-term incremental processing works with complex uh, event processing, machine learning, and storage integration to persist the messages. So once you analyze that, in order to uh, make the digital assets, you will make the reports. For that, you also have to define what kind of stream that you want to uh, return back. And you will do the pretty much same kind of activities as you did in the receive part. But there is also you can uh, publish the results and view the results in the dashboards. Um, Mohan will cover the, all the in-depth uh, in, um, aspect of this part. But as the overall process, we, the single see the app consists of input streams, output stream, and the, um, the analytic definitions. So for that, the process event is a stream manner. At, at the same time, we also isolate the unit with set of queries, input, and output streams. So, this query language is pretty much SQL as I mentioned before. So to do these activities, we have a developer tools. So those developer tools available as the uh, code base at the same time UI base. So the editor itself consists of debugger, simulation, and testing tools. Uh, and we will be using the, this developer studio to showcase you and demonstrate how we are going to achieve the use cases that we have defined before. So the stream process studio consists uh, of uh, writing a CD application, which allows you to uh, uh, highlight the syntax. And it also helps you to auto-complete the information uh, with error reporting and do documentation support. And very important part of any development activities, you have to able to do uh, debugging without any struggle. So the, uh, the studio itself providing a debugging tools to inspect the events and inspect the query states uh, during the uh, implementation phase. Further, the uh, testing of the CD app can be done via the event simulation. So you can send the event by event, and you can simulate your events 
uh, with the random data. Also, also you can input the CSV file, and you can simulate your incoming events. Or else, you can also hook up with the databases so that it will fed into the uh, event stream, and you can uh, say, uh, simulate your events. Further, the support for the running and testing on Python, so you can write your Python uh, implementation using PyCity. Uh, we, we also covering that during the uh, demo. Uh, further, there is the IDE tools available. If you don't like the uh, streaming uh, processor studio, you can adapt the uh, other IDE tools, such as IntelliJ IDEA plugins, and so on and so forth. So. Let me welcome Mohan. So he will be take, walk you through uh, in-depth uh, ses uh, session on how to write the uh, SQL queries or uh, streaming SQL queries using WSO to stream process. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Anji. Uh, OK. Uh, we are going to have a bit of a long session uh, to discuss about uh, uh, how to write these queries in stream processor. And uh, <clears throat> I'll switch between the slides and also the stream browser product and explaining the constructs. And uh, uh, let's uh, try to manage with the time. And um, I also pre-build uh, some um, uh, apps uh, uh, to save some time. And I can show both and give you some understanding about that. Please raise hands. If you don't understand, then I can explain a bit more. <coughs> OK. Uh, Let's start uh, writing some queries. And uh, we'll go with from the basics. Then it will be easy to understand things. Uh, the first thing is if you take a stream processor, uh, a W stream processor, the, our streaming applications are itself uh, contained. That means you have one single Siddhi app, which we call as Siddhi app. Uh, um, and uh, that Siddhi app contains self-contained manner where you can write the queries, you can write where to receive events, how to process those events, and what to do with those events after processing. You can write end-to-end -end flow in a single CD app. And uh, to start with, uh, you have to write a, first you have to write a name for it. Uh, for this use case, we are using as Sweet Factory Analytics. And uh, second one is what you have to do is you have to <coughs> define input stream. Where to, from where you are going to receive those events. Right? In this use case, uh, we have two input streams. One is the raw material stream. Other one is the sweet production stream. There are two streams that are defined. And uh, <coughs> now actually, OK. Uh, the raw material stream is the uh, input stream for this CD app. And we are going to receive events for this specific stream uh, using HTTP source. That means we are going to receive through HTTP protocol. And uh, our data type is JSON. And if you check the, the specific raw material stream, you have two attributes, name, amount, which is a string and a double type. Uh, and as I mentioned in my previous talk, we can receive events from multiple data sources through different transports, like MQTT, HTTP, TCP, Kafka, and JMS likewise. And also, you can write your own transport as well. It also provides the extensibility to write your own. The next, question, next one is uh, <clears throat> the mapping part. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a default mapping concept where uh, you have to send the event in a predefined format. For example, if you are sending a JSON, then the predefined format is defined like this, where you have a uh, name. Uh, <clears throat> named uh, JSON like event, event name should be there. In, inside that, you can have uh, whatever the attributes that you are going to use, what are the attributes that are defined in the stream. In this case, we have two attributes, name and amount. That's why those two attributes are inside the event tag. And uh, at the same time, uh, we also support text, XML, JSON, and binary data type as well to receive those events. And uh, if you talk about the custom mapping, let's say you have your, your own format of data. And uh, in, that, in that case, then you have to do uh, some mapping at stream processor level to derive that specific information into a stream. Uh, in this case, we are using a JSON path, where we are sending events as a JSON event. 
uh, for example, to receive, to get the uh, value for the name, what we are doing is we are getting the ID of an item from the item uh, element, and also for amount, we are getting the amount from the item element. That's why we are using a JSON path for mapping purposes at the down. <coughs> Uh, now, uh, we have received, <coughs> uh, received the event to the uh, raw material stream using HTTP protocol. Uh, after that, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to log those events simply after receiving events. For that, we are using a sync. Uh, in this case, we are using a sync called logger, which simply logs the receiving event just for our demonstration purposes. And uh, in, the, in a typical use case, you will use some um, other things like HTTP if you want to send to another endpoint, or if you want to send it to a, a dashboard, you'll use some uh, a sync type called WebSocket. Likewise, it's based on the use cases. Here, for just for demonstration purposes, I'm using uh, lock sync type for logging purposes. <coughs> And uh, okay, let's start from that. And uh, to explain this use case, I quickly go through our developer studio. Uh, I'm going to use uh, our editor for these purposes. And uh, uh, as <coughs> as Wanji mentioned, uh, WSL stream browser contain two four profiles. Uh, first one is the editor profile, where you can uh, do all um, uh, creating the uh, streaming application and uh, debugging testing and also um, do with some event simulation, test it and those purposes. And uh, other profile is you we have a profile called dashboard profile, where to visualize all the data for dashboard purposes, like we have our own dashboard. And also we have a status dashboard. Those dashboards are available in this dashboard profile. Uh, and we have another profile called worker. Worker profile is actually used. It's the, actually the runtime. And once you build the CD app using uh, WS2 uh, stream, uh, <coughs> stream process studio, you can get that CD app and deploy in a worker runtime and run it. And uh, manager runtime is another profile we have in our uh, stream processor. It's actually used when you are using a distributed deployment. And uh, I'll explain all those uh, profiles while I'm going through the demo uh, time to time, then you can understand that part. And here actually, uh, this is the uh, editor page, the stream processor. And uh, once you go to the, uh, I'll just show one of the examples which is already there. This is one of the query which is already there. <coughs> Uh, in, I think so. As you can see, yeah. This is a simple query that is, uh, which is already written, where you have a source type and you are receiving events, and after that, you have a sync type which simply logs that. And uh, user can, as we mentioned, it has. Uh, auto completion by providing suggestions based on the use case. And uh, it, it suggests you different source type, like WSO2 event, WebSocket, SQS, like different source types. And based on the use case, you can select one. If, let's say if it, WSO2 event select, give you the all required mandatory properties that required for the source. And uh, then we are defining a stream, and a defined stream. Uh, Tooltip will give you the information about what type of stream that you have to create. And it suggests some information, help you to write those queries. And uh, let's say I'm writing define stream, and it gives you uh, some uh, filling there. You can write like attribute uh, name, and you can say it's a string type. And uh, H. And uh, <coughs> and also it provides some 
<coughs> Array highlighting, if you say here, it give you, it's a <coughs> saying it's not a proper format. It's not defined in a proper way. <coughs> and, uh, and likewise, you can get more information about the errors and auto-filling those information. And let's say uh, <coughs> this is actually the source editor. If you are good at Siddhi SQL or if you are good at streaming SQL, you can use this source editor and write your query. Uh, let's say if you are not <coughs> familiar much with the uh, source editor, at that time you can move to the design view and uh, uh, you can build your own use case. And here, actually, uh, these constructs are actually uh, some predefined models which I already explained, like source, uh, sync, and uh, stream, and uh, table, window. Likewise, it contains all the predefined models which are there in the streaming applications. Uh, for example, let's say we are going to use a sync, and I'm adding a sync here, and uh, it have, uh, give you the type. Let's say I'm saying it's a log type. And uh, I just want to connect it from the stream to specific stream. That means simply whatever events are received to the suite production stream, I'm simply logging into another stream. And if I go to the source viewer back, and uh, you will see that the newly added stream uh, sync is shown in the source view. Likewise, you can move between the source view and also the design view and write your queries based on your expectation. So just for uh, demonstration purposes, I've given you some idea about uh, what are the features are available in uh, the editor and how you can play around it. And uh, I'll come to the editor again to explain about those uh, examples and use cases. And uh, I'll go through the use cases bit more and come back to the editor. And uh, the first use case that I'm going to discuss is, uh, <coughs> uh, we already uh, mentioned about, we are going to talk about uh, sweet production factory, and we are going to talk about the use cases around that. And uh, first use case is production at, at each factory should not uh, reduce below 5,000 units per hour. That means if the production is reduced, 5,000 units per hour, then we have to send an alert or something to the manager saying the production is reducing due to something. Go and check. Something goes wrong. Right? To identify that, we can divide that use case into two phases. One is the monitor and identify events that indicate low production. That's the first thing we have to do. How to do that? Uh, we have a stream called Sweet Production Stream, and it has uh, two fields, name and amount. And what we are going to do is we are going to do a sum <coughs> uh, of the amount, and we are sensing it as an hourly total, and inserting into a stream called low production alert stream. Here, what we are doing is we are calculating the sum for, 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 the, for the events which are coming from the beginning. That means we don't have any limits. We don't have any windows or any limits for these queries. That means if we have simply an aggregate for a stream, then it calculates from the beginning, from the first event itself. It starts from first events and calculates forever. And, uh, but what are use cases? We want to calculate the total amount produced in the last hour. Because of that, we are adding a time window into that, where we have a window time, one hour. By adding a window to this query, we are calculating the total amount for last hour. <coughs> Now, <coughs> we calculate the uh, total amount for the last hour, but what we want to calculate the total amount for last hour for each and every product. For that, what we are doing is we are calculating the total hour, but again, we are doing a group by using a name. That means we are calculating the total production for each product for last hour. And uh, next one is we have the use case was if the Production is less than 500, 5,000 for last hour for each product. For that, we are adding a having, for example, in this case, we are calculating the total uh, production for last hour, and we are group buying by uh, each product. For each product, we are calculating that. After that, we are checking whether the hourly total is less than 5,000. In that case, it's a low production 
uh, that happened in last hour for some specific product. At that time, we are sending to those uh, events which matches these condition, hourly total less than 5,000, to another stream called low production alert stream. <clears throat> now, the another, there's another condition. We, are, we want to consider only the working hour for this specific rule. Right? At that case, <clears throat> what we are doing is, in the select le query level, we are extracting the current time in millis. And we are getting the hour for the current uh, manipulation. For example, if it's 510, we say it's what is the hour of that uh, current time in millis. And we are saying that's as a current hour. And uh, we are checking whether the current hour is between 9 and 5. That's the normal typical working hour, 9 to 5. We are saying whether the current hour is between 9 and 5, then we consider as a low alert stream. We don't consider the production that happens in the weekends or off hours. Now, <clears throat> uh, in the streaming world, um, for each and every event, there will be a uh, uh, manipulation will happen, right? For example, we are getting data continuously, and uh, we, we, are, uh, we are checking whether there is a low production for last hour for each and every event. But since we are getting events continuously, the alert can be triggered continuously if the low production occurs. For example, for the same product, there can be multiple alerts can be triggered in a short time. Because for each and every event, we calculate the total. Right? For, for, in that case, to rate limit those alerts, we are saying only one alert would be enough for 15 minutes. Right? At that time, what we are doing is we can do a rate limiting by using a, a rate limiting query. Here, we are use output last every 50 minutes. That means output only the last event, last alerted event in the last 15 minutes. Likewise, we can do a rate limiting. There are multiple rate limiting options that are available in stream browser. Like snap, um, we can, for each and every, uh, based on time, you can do a rate limit. And based on the number of events, also, you can do a rate limiting. Now, <coughs> we, now we identify the uh, low, productions, uh, low production events. And we are uh, separate them into a stream called low production stream. Now our next use case is okay. Now we found out the uh, low production. Now we have to notify to our manager, right? Then send alerts to factory managers via email. That's our second phase of the use case. For that, <coughs> uh, what we can do is we can uh, attach a sync for that specific low production alert stream, right? Uh, as I mentioned, since we want to send an email, we are attaching an email sync to that uh, specific stream. And in this query, you can understand where we have an email and we have a two address. After that, the subject, we are saying low production of. In double curly, we are saying name. And but the type, we are saying as send as a text to the, because it's an email. And saying in the, in the text content, we are saying, hi, manager, production of name has gone down to hourly total in last hour. Likewise, we can have some nice uh, body for it. You can have a HTML body as well. And here, if you take that uh, curly braces thing, that means name and the hourly total, that means the actual data which is there in the event will be replaced for those fields and will create a proper email content. And. Uh, <coughs> I'll explain the second use case as well, then I'll go to the uh, demonstration. The second use case is uh, raw material storage at factory should be closely monitored. That is our second use case. If the production need to be a uh, consistent one without any problems in the supply, we need to be monitor about our storage, and also we need to keep track of our stocks. And uh, first, phase of it is store raw material shipment details in the data store. That means whatever raw material that we receive to our factory need to be stored in a uh, database, data store. Then only we can track at the later whether, uh, whether we have uh, used all the raw material or not. We need to keep track in somewhere. Then we are storing those raw material in a data store. That's the first phase of it. For that, uh, as I mentioned in my earlier talk, uh, we can use the data store integration. Uh, it allows you to perform this uh, operation like search, insert, delete, update, and insert or update. And also, you can perform 
optimization using primary keys and index keys. And uh, here, actually, we are resuming the raw material uh, in a stream called raw material stream. And events are coming through HTTP. And uh, now what we are doing is we are defining a table called latest shipment table. And we are having two fields, like name and amount that we receive. And in this specific table, we don't have any annotation or anything. Then it's considered as an in-memory table. We are keeping that information as in-memory. That's what it means by this specific statement. Uh, now, since we want to <coughs> uh, access, uh, uh, do manipulation with the data, we want to improve the performance. Because of that, we are using primary key as a name. And also, we indexed also the amount. Uh, in, in some cases, you can index uh, very, uh, in this case, we are indexed the amount. But uh, in normal real case, you can index some other values which you are going to uh, search based on those attributes. And, uh, uh, let's say you want to use an external data store or some database or persistent storage to keep those information rather than keeping it in memory, right? At that time, let's say we are using an RDBMS event store. And uh, at that time, you can have an act store and uh, add an annotation that. And you can make this uh, specific event table as bind with the external event store. Then it's, uh, external event store is, uh, uh, will be mirrored through this event table statement. And uh, now what we are doing is whatever the events that we re receive into the raw material stream, we are getting those events and adding to the R table. We are simply persisting in our table. Uh, again, uh, <coughs> we are doing an update or insert. Let's say there's already information is there uh, about the last shipment. Then what we are doing is we are simply replacing the, with the new information. Either in this case, you can, what we can do is either you can get the, what is the existing uh, data, and maybe you do an aggregation and persist also. That's also possible. That means the remaining raw material plus the current new material and persist the new information. But here, what we are doing is simply updating the uh, latest raw material that we received. And if the data is already there, we'll update it. If not, we'll insert it for the first time. Uh, now, actually, we have. <coughs> Uh, stored our raw material in the data store. The second one is we want to calculate the hourly to yearly raw data material uh, for each raw material type. Right? Uh, to perform that, we are going to use streaming aggregation, uh, streaming data aggregation, which we already discussed. It allows you to perform aggregation over the long time period, to, from seconds to years. And uh, to do that, what we are going to do is we are going to define an aggregation here. Uh, if you check this query, we are defined an aggregation called raw material aggregation from raw material stream. We are selecting name and the sum of the raw material as a total amount and also average of amount as an average amount. And we are group buying by the raw material name and aggregating from minute to year. Likewise, we are calculating the total uh, <coughs> raw material over the year and we are uh, keeping them in an aggregated table. And uh, since we are planning to use a RDBMS store, we are using a RDBMS annotation for the aggregation, uh, as similar to the data store that we mentioned earlier. Now, <coughs> we persist those data into a, uh, into a data store, and we are keeping those information in an aggregated uh, manner. And uh, now we want to retrieve data, those aggregated data over the time. For that, actually, we can use uh, similar queries, something like this, where we want to, uh, from, uh, from raw material aggregation on name caramel, the raw material type is caramel, within this time frame, 2018, get the data for per minute, from per minute aggregation, select name, total amount, and average amount. From that, you can get the data, but we are already ag aggregated and persisted in the aggregated table. <clears throat> now, actually, what we have done was we get the raw material information. We showed how to store it in the event table. Next query is we want to aggregate in longer time, then we do aggregation and store in the table. Now, how to visualize the summary information in the dashboard? For that, actually, you can use the dashboard capability, which is there in stream processor, which is I'm going to explain in a few minutes. And 
dashboard uh, allows you to do uh, generate dashboards and also widgets. It also provides you the fine grained permissions like dashboard level to widget to data level. And, um, and also, the uh, gadget generation wizard support pops up approaches where you can interconnect two gadgets. Based on the selection of another gadget, you can make the changes in other gadgets. That's also possible. And uh, okay, before moving to the third use case, I'll explain about the first and second use case. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> I already created the few use uh, few scenarios which I already discussed. For example, this is the first one. Okay, this is the first one where uh, which I explained earlier, where you define a suite production stream and also you have a raw material stream, and you are receiving events to a HTTP source, and uh, <clears throat> after that we are simply Login those information. Uh, to explain that, let's say we are running this specific. Let's say you are running this specific uh, CD app. Uh, yeah. I added some uh, test files when I'm doing some uh, testing before. That's why it's causing okay, so. <coughs> okay. Uh, now I'm going to the stream process. I'm opening the, my first case. And uh, here I'm starting the server. And uh, If you take this specific use case, you can see, <coughs> uh, which I explained earlier, uh, we have a simple use case where we want to find out the uh, low production for last hour. And uh, after that, if we found a low production, we want to send an email to the uh, manager about that low production. Because of, uh, since I want to demonstrate the purpose, I'm reducing the window time like 10 seconds. And also, uh, rather using an email, I'm using a log, uh, logger uh, to explain the use case, since my network is not allowing me to send an email from here. And uh, if we're going to run this specific example, uh, we have a feature called uh, Event Simulator, where you can try and send some uh, events, simulate events, and test that query. For example, <coughs> I'm going to use 
my simulated events to test this specific query. And uh, I'm going to run it. And if I start the simulation, and uh, we can see that uh, uh, alerts are generated based on the, uh, my predefined queries. And uh, it, it find out the low production uh, greater than that specific amount. We have mentioned that uh, 5,000. Here you can check the low production whenever it's less than 5,000, like five, 509, 222, like this. It check those low production and logs those events. I've used a, a log uh, sync here to just to log those events, but in the real use case, based on a requirement, you can send those events to different endpoints and do manipulations. <clears throat> okay, now I'll explain about how the simple query can be written and how the stream, uh, simulation can be done. And uh, next query I'm going to <coughs> uh, tell about is this specific uh, query which discussed about the aggregation. And here, if you can see, uh, as I mentioned in the earlier slides, whatever events, uh, latest shipments, events that receive to the raw material stream, we are persist persisting to the uh, event table called latest shipment event table uh, to demonstrate the uh, store concept, which is the stream processor. If we check in the top, uh, the third query which we have, we have defined at store RDBMS, and we are defining a JDBC URL for that. And after that, we can define uh, what is the connection URL, like password and username. And here, actually, password is visible at the plain text, but uh, there's another option that you can follow if you're using a deployment YAML. And in that um, uh, deployment YAML file, you can encrypt those uh, connection URLs and store them and use that only the connection factory name in the streaming app level. By using that, you can avoid that uh, sensitive information showing in the editor level. And uh, other than that, <coughs> the second one is about the aggregation, same as the store. Uh, what we have done was we have written aggregation like raw material aggregation. And from raw material stream, we are selecting name and also sum and also average amount. And we are doing a group by based on the name and aggregating for a second to year. <coughs> and, uh, and I already deployed these queries in my worker profile. That means simply what I have done was I have Uh, I have copied that specific files into my work runtime. If you go to the work runtime, uh, if you go to the WSO2 folder, inside that we have a called uh, worker. Inside there's a folder called deployment folder, and inside that CD apps, CD files. And inside that, we are, here only we are adding all the uh, CD apps that we have created in the editor. The CD app is a self-contained file, which you can simply go and drop into the uh, a worker deployment directory. After that, those uh, uh, CD apps will be activated and they'll run. In this case, <clears throat> I'm starting the worker. <clears throat> okay, now the worker is started. I already explained that about uh, my aggregation query, right? Where I already create my aggregation query, and inside that I have uh, received event and persist those information. Uh, now I'm going to use a REST endpoint and get those aggregated data uh, from the, uh, my worker directory. For that, I'm going to use a query like this, and uh, I'm going to access the, my server's store's query endpoint, and I'm saying, the app name is uh, Suite Factory Analytics 3. And the query that I'm going to run is from raw material aggregation on name caramel within 2018. <coughs> Not sure whether I can maximize, sorry. And uh, get the data for per minutes from the per minutes aggregation and uh, get name, total amount, and total uh, average amount. And if I run this query, uh, 
you will see the summarized uh, the records that you get from the rest endpoint. It gives you the uh, aggregation for each and every minute from that specific time frame which I mentioned. Since I have very little amount of data in the per minute table, I got only five attributes. But based on the um, use case, it can go gr grow into thousands to millions. But if there is a, if, the, if you believe that there are billions of data and it's better to go with the day or hour, uh, month based aggregation rather going with the minute based aggregation. Uh, now, actually, we talked about uh, how to find out the low production and how we can write that in the streaming editor. And we deployed in the worker. After deploying in the uh, worker, we have retrieved those summarized data using the rest endpoint. Now, how to represent that in the dashboard? That's the next question we have to raise. OK. Now, let's say we have a dashboard is running already. And I'm going to the. <clears throat> dashboard. And I'm logging to the server. And uh, <clears throat> this is the dashboard uh, default page, which represents all the predefined dashboards which are there. I'm going to create a gadget. Uh, I'm saying sweet aggregation gadget. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are multiple data providers available. One is the Siddhi store data provider, other one is the RDBMS streaming data provider, WebSocket provider, RDBMS batch provider. Each of, of these data providers use, have different use cases. For example, if you, want, if you want to read uh, data from RDBMS store, just read the store, whatever they are in the RDBMS store. Then you can use the RDBMS batch data provider. And if you want to uh, see the real streaming data in the dashboard, then you can go with the WebSocket provider. And if you, are, uh, if you want to uh, stream the data from the RDBMS, then you can go with the RDBMS streaming provider. And I mentioned we have uh, the aggregated data in the data store. To read the aggregated data in an aggregated manner, for that, we have something called Siddhi Store Data Provider. In this case, I'm going to use the Siddhi Store Data Provider. <clears throat> and uh, to use Siddhi, data, Siddhi Store Data Provider, you have to provide the Siddhi app that used for the, to create that aggregation initially. I already have that aggregation which I used to create. This is the aggregation. And also, this is my query that I used initially to get that summarized data. And I'm passing that query to get that information. Now, goes to next level. And I'm selecting what the type of gadget I'm going to create. Uh, let's assume it's a bar chart. And in next field, I'm saying it's a name. And the type of a chart I'm saying it's a bar chart. And uh, by field, I'm saying get the total amount and uh, represent the total amount. And I'm seeing the legend as 30. And uh, to visualize that information. At that time, you can see when I'm calling through the Postman uh, client, it shows five data, right? same five data is actually represented in our gadget here. And uh, what you can do is you can simply create that gadget. And after that, you can go to the create a new dashboard. Um, <coughs> aggregation dashboard. I'm just saying test. And here I can add my specific gadget which I created. Yeah. And uh,
sorry i'll show them my previous one which i tried this is one of the earlier one which i created just to show and um, you can show that visualization in the dashboard <coughs> and uh, now actually as we <coughs> discuss in a slide we have covered the use case related to dashboard and how to write the aggregation, how to retrieve those summarized information. And now I am planning to go to my third use case, where warehouse managers should be alerted if there is a shortage of uh, raw material for future production cycles. That means we are tracking the raw materials information. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, if the, uh, there's a possibility of getting the raw data also, it's a matter of how you are creating the query in that. I have used the uh, Siddhi streaming data provider. At that time, I'm using get the aggregated information. Let's say you have uh, some other option, like if you want to, uh, uh, if you're using RDMS provider, then it's a matter of reading the data from the database. Okay. You mean the export capabilities, right? Yeah, I, I think that's in our roadmap. Uh, most probably it will come. And uh, <clears throat> he actually, we already calculated the, the raw material, but we have uh, <clears throat> uh, retrieved and we are storing the database. And at the same time, we have uh, manipulated how much uh, production that happening over the time. Now it's a matter of uh, uh, identifying if the uh, raw materials are shortages and alert to the manager saying there's a possible raw materials shortage and do something for that. And uh, the first thing is you have to check if the current raw material input rate is enough for the production. That's the first thing you have to do to find out that. To do that, <clears throat> what we are doing is we are joining the production input stream, whatever the raw material that we've sent to the production. And also, we are joining with the raw material stream over the last one hour. And based on the <clears throat> on condition, that means we are checking for each and every uh, uh, raw material type. And we are calculating the sum of the raw material. And also, we are calculating the sum of the total consumption of last one hour. And we are group buying based on the, that raw material type and uh, checking whether total consumption <clears throat> of the raw material, it's increased by 5% in last one hour. And if that is the case, then we are sending those uh, uh, filtered out events into another stream called raw material input alert stream. And uh, here actually you can see, excuse me, how two different streams are joined uh, over the time using a window. And uh, when joining these two stream, we have used a condition where the type of the raw material is the condition which we mentioned as a name. And we are calculating the total raw material and also total consumption for last one hour. Based on that, we are uh, checking the uh, condition whether the consumption is uh, higher than the, 5% higher than the raw material that we are getting for last one hour. In that is the case, then we are sending those events to a, another stream called raw material input rate alert stream. <coughs> uh, in this case, actually, um, um, we defined a, a window actually uh, uh, with the stream itself, predefined window, but that's another type of window which is available, which we called as external time window, where you can define a uh, window also same as the stream. The, uh, you might ask, what is the use of this since we already have a window, right? And uh, the important use case is, let's say you want to do some uh, group by your aggregation with multiple queries. Let, let's, assume, let's assume you are want to do uh, <coughs> uh, group bys or join with raw material streams, and you want to find out the total aggregation with different uh, uh, fields. For example, here we are using the name when joining with the raw material and also the production input stream. But let's say you have another case where you want to join with the name and the date or something, or name or another attribute. 
then you are doing another group by, right? But if you are using a separate window for these two queries, that means you are duplicating those windows with two queries, then the, the data which holding in those windows also is duplicated, that one thing. And based on the uh, query execution, there's a possibility where one or two events be missed in the second query, and those one or two events will be there in the first query. Uh, to avoid that, what we are doing is we are getting that specific commonly used window is outside, and we are defining as a defined window, and we can use it separately. And uh, <clears throat> now, actually, uh, <clears throat> first, first thing that we identify is check the current raw material input rate is enough for the production. The second one we want to is <clears throat> whether the future raw material requirement, predict the future raw material requirement based on the history information that we have available. And uh, to do that, actually, we are <clears throat> using our uh, uh, machine learning capabilities, which are there in the stream processor. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous pr uh, talk, we have two type of machine learning capabilities. One is you can use the predefined, pre-built, pre and pre <clears throat> um, um, pre lead and pre learn model. That means you are building the model, and you uh, learn that model externally. And after that, you can take that model and uh, integrate with the stream processor, and you can make the prediction. That's the one option. The second option is stream processor can learn uh, online with the incoming events, and it may, can make prediction based on the knowledge it got based on the learning of the incoming events. And uh, in this use case, actually, we created a PMML model <coughs> where uh, it will get the previous hour amount and the current hour amount current hour amount, and based on that, it will make a prediction how it, be, how it will be in the next hour. Likewise, it will make a prediction, and it's a model that created for our testing purposes or demo purposes here. That's a one case where you are using the pre-built and pre learn model. And the uh, other one is the online machine learning model, where we learn on the fly, and also we make prediction on the fly. Uh, in this case, if you check, uh, from we have a production input stream and we have production input result stream. From production input st uh, result stream, we are <coughs> sending those events into a uh, AM rule uh, regressor, and on top of that, that, on top of that, we are training that specific uh, model. At the same time, we are getting the input uh, production input stream, and we are sending to AM rule regressor. And we are trying to predict how it's going to look like in next hour, likewise. And uh, these are uh, two models which we have tried for demo purposes, but based on the requirement, you might have different machine learning models or rules required for that. And uh, now, actually, <coughs> we predicted what will be the, uh, the requirement for the next hour based on our machine learning approach. Now, actually, what we are going to do is check the predict the raw material availability with the warehouse stocks. That means we have a warehouse stocks. We have the prediction how it's going to be in the next hour. Now, we are going to match whether the warehouse uh, stocks in the warehouse is enough for the next hour as per our prediction. Right? And uh, to do that, what we are doing is we are joining, <coughs> we are joining with our uh, prediction team that we made the prediction, and also we have the the window that we earlier created, which have the last hours information, which have the last, uh, raw material information of the last hour. And based on that, we are checking whether the next hour pr uh, prediction is enough, uh, whether the next hour prediction can be uh, settled with the uh, raw material which we received in the last hour. Right? That means whatever raw material received now will be used for the next hour to hold the production. And then to do that, what we are doing is we are joining with the, our table, uh, which have the raw material aggregation for the last hour. And uh, we have the predict prediction stream as well. We are joining both uh, window and the stream based on the raw material type. We are checking whether the total raw material is less than the, the predicted consumption for the next hour. In the, if the raw material is less than the total consumption that we predicted, then we are saying it's a raw material input 
alert stream. Then we have to alert saying, get some more raw materials, because uh, prediction made there will be a more raw material required for the next hour. <coughs> Uh, now, the fourth use case is factory managers should be alerted if the production does not start within 15 minutes from the raw material arrival. This is another use case that we want to uh, identify using stream processor. And uh, <clears throat> to do that, actually, we are using a pattern, the non-occurrence pattern. We have a stream called raw material stream, where we have a name and the amount. And also, we have another stream called production input stream. We have a name and amount. And uh, what we are doing is we are having written a pattern query here. If you check the pattern query for from every, that means for, means for every event in the raw material stream, and uh, after we are receiving for each and every event in the raw material stream, and we are checking whether there's a uh, same type of event came in the production input stream. And if it is not came for a 15 minutes, and at that time we'll say it's a production start delay. Right. If you check this query, we have a not to check whether that specific condition is met for 15 minutes or not. 15 minutes. If it is not met, then uh, we'll identify it as a non-occurrence pattern, and we'll send uh, that specific event to a production start delayed stream. Then managers can take some actions if the production is delayed, even though the raw materials are available, and check and make some uh, <coughs> uh, things to solve that. The next uh, use case is uh, alert factory managers if the rate of the production continuously decreases for X time period. That means over the time period, if the production is reduces, then alert the manager saying that production is continuously reducing over the time. There's something goes wrong. Go ahead and check that. And uh, <clears throat> to identify that, first one is we have to identify identify the production trend over a time period. First thing, we have to identify the trend over the time period. To identify the trend over the time period, we have a query written like this, where we have a sweet production stream. And uh, from sweet production stream, we are calculating every each one minute, <coughs> we are calculating the uh, sum. And also, we are grouping them with the uh, type of the uh, sweet production. And uh, we are inserting into a stream called last minute production stream. For each and every minute, we are calculating the, the total production made for the each and every type of suite. And after that, what we are doing is we are partitioning based on the name of the partition is another, I'll forget to explain. Partition is another construct which available in the stream process, WS stream process in, in the streaming SQL world, where you can uh, partition the events based on some uh, key or some attribute, and you can do those processing parallelly. In this case, actually, we have a, a stream called last minute production stream that contains the uh, production for last minute for each and every suite type. Then what we are doing is we are partitioning that specific stream using the suite type, which is we called as name. That's what we mentioned as partition with name of last production stream. And for each and every that individual partition, we'll do this processing. For example, for each and every uh, suite type, we'll do this uh, manipulation where we'll check the last minute's production. And this last minute's production is uh, the current minute production is the less than the last minute production. Likewise, we are calculating, uh, checking few occurrences, a uh, few continuous occurrences. Then based on that, we are sending to a stream called continuous product reduction stream. The main reason why you ask why we are using partition here, because if you take production input stream, that contains all the events for different type of uh, suites, right? But we want to calculate how whether the production of a specific suite reduces over the time. That means we have to identify only that specific type of suite. Then to identify that specific type of suite, then we want to do the pattern for each and every type of suite. Because of that only, we are doing the partition first for each and every type of suites. Then we are doing the pattern uh, sorry, when, then we are identifying the trend for that specific suite type. <coughs> okay, now actually uh, we covered about the use cases, and just I'll quickly explain those things in now editor. <coughs>
if you go to the editor <coughs> the first uh, <coughs> the first um, uh, query which i already explained it's identify the uh, <coughs> To, um, the total consumption uh, of last hour is uh, greater than 5 percentage of the total uh, raw material that we received. That is the query that we have written here and uh, here actually what we have done was we are joining both production input stream and the raw material input stream for 15 seconds because of the demo purposes and uh, based on the type of the raw material and we are calculating the sum uh, some and also the uh, some of the total raw material and some of the total consumption, and uh, we are doing a uh, group by based on that specific type, and we are checking whether the total consumption is great, greater than five percentage of the total raw material. And uh, here actually, um, I'm using a simulator for that to simulate that use case. And uh, <coughs> if you check here, and um, this is one of the simulation that I've done. We are, uh, you can see the alerts are generated based on the uh, use case where uh, if the caramel is uh, uh, usage is more than the uh, its Caramel's production, caramel production is more than the, the raw material that we receive for the caramel. Then by checking that, if it's uh, more than 5 percentage, then it sends an alert. And, um, and this, the second one is, second query, which I explained is something similar to that. <coughs> but here we have used the window query. We use a separate window. We, and, uh, and uh, written the same query in manner. I'm not going to discuss much on this part. And the third one <coughs> is about about um, uh, the use case which I mentioned about the the, the PML-based model that we can use for the prediction. In this case, actually, we have. Um, uh, production input stream and the type we have uh, the name of the production input stream and also current hour amount and previous hour amount. At the same time, prediction predicted production input stream we have another few attributes like uh, the current hour, previous hour, next hour. This is the actually the output stream. And if you check the query from production input stream and this specific query from production input stream, we'll send it to a uh, PMML model where we have already built, and uh, in uh, this PMML model will f give you the prediction for the next hour amount. And uh, I'm not going to discuss about how to build the PMML model, uh, and uh, we can get more information from our documentation. And if I'm going to run this query, uh, let's say I'm running this specific uh, query, and uh, I'm going to send uh, some simple data for that. And I'm going to select the production input stream. And I'm saying caramel. And saying it's a uh, current of its 1,000. And the previous hour, it's around uh, 1,500. And uh, sorry. Okay. Sorry, it seems like I am messed up with my model. That's fine. Uh, I'll explain the next part about <coughs> the next query, which I mentioned uh, that uh, online streaming model. The online streaming model you can see here, and uh, we are learning, we are training our model by using the same input stream data. Now, after learning that model, at the same time, we are predicting the 
you, with the learning model which we used already. And uh, here also some, use, uh, some type of use case that we can use to write the streaming online, app, uh, online streaming model to predict your use cases as well. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, the next one is actually <clears throat> I want to talk about the The non-occurrences, which I mentioned uh, in my uh, earlier slide, where we have the uh, raw material stream and also we have the production input stream, and we'll check whether the uh, production is started within the specific time once raw material arrived. For that, we are using the non-occurrence pattern. In this use case, if you can see, if you can see, <coughs> we are checking the raw material stream, and we are checking whether the uh, there is uh, any event for that specific raw material type in the production input stream for 10 seconds. Um, just for the demo purpose, I'm using 10 seconds, but in real use case, you can have a larger uh, window and use it. And uh, in this case, actually, uh, <coughs> you can use a production input stream and uh, based on the condition if it's met it will send you a alert and uh, and uh, here, sorry based on the condition, it sends you an alert. And uh, this one is actually um, the last query which I mentioned about the partition, uh, where you are partitioning the incoming stream, last minute production stream, based on the name. After doing the partition, uh, you are calculating the, whether the uh, production trend is decreasing over the time. If it's decreasing over the time, you can check the continuous, put into a stream called continuous production stream. Okay. Uh, now I got the uh, trigger which I set for the earliest case, where continuous production reduction stream, where it check all the time. If the trend is goes reduce all the time, then it find out and send an alert. And uh, these are the few queries actually I want to try in the, this session. I'll quickly go a few other cases which I wanted to cover. And... Uh, <coughs> And uh, the other important thing is, uh, I mentioned about the business, uh, business rule manager in my earliest presentation as well. And uh, um, as a developer, we can write these queries either using the developer studio, using the editor, or using the drag and drop uh, editor. But as a business user, they'll need a more user-friendly or easy way of changing those threshold or change, making those changes. And for that, actually, we have something called Business Rule Manager, where a developer can uh, build the streaming application, and they can template those threshold, and they can deploy in the stream browser. And uh, what manager can do is they can go to the, uh, those dashboard and change those fields and deploy based on a requirement. And uh, as, as, as well as for the developer, as, also, we have a separate dashboard, the separate editor that they can use to build those template uh, without much Azil, where it will provide you a both uh, uh, easy way of writing those templates as well. At the same time, it also provides you for the business user on how to, on when using those created uh, business tools by adding new values like that. I'll explain that part as well. Uh, this is a simple UI about uh, for the developer to write those templates. And this is a simple uh, form-based UI which developer can use to build the uh, rules. 
And once they build the rules, they can deploy it into the stream processor, and the business user will see the similar to some, something like this. And uh, if I go to the, uh, quickly if I go to the dashboard and I explain that, <coughs> sorry, if I go to the, okay, this is the, template editor that developer can use to build their uh, template for the business user. Uh, I already have a pre-built uh, template which I am going to open and it's easy for me to explain. And uh, okay. This is the pre-built uh, template where you will give a UUID, you will give a name, and you will give a uh, description. In the rule templates, you can have multiple uh, rules for that. And uh, in this case, uh, we ha this is uh, some information that you need, like whether you can have multiple uh, objects of the same rule. That means multiple, whether you can have only one specific uh, app deployed in the streaming server, or you can have multiple apps can be deployed with the same rule or not. For that, you can have whether the instance count is one or many, and also, and uh, if you, it's a template, what type of CD app that you want to template? For example, if you take this specific CD app, uh, you have uh, <coughs> you have a query like this, where you have <coughs> stream, and you have a uh, getting a stream from a sweet production stream, and you have a batch window, and after that you are doing a summon. Uh, calculating the production rate, and this is the query that we used earlier. If you if you remember, for to identify the trend reduction over the time, and here what we have done was we have templated the time range that we use for the query. Uh, by templating the time range, <coughs> uh, you are allowing the business user to change those time range. The, let's say that developer is build this template. After building this template, they can deploy it into the stream processor then what, what business user can do is they can go to the dashboard and uh, the dashboard we have a Okay, we have a dashboard for a business user. Uh, they have two options. One is from template, the template that built by the developer, you can build the streaming app. Other one is from the scratch. Uh, let's talk about the from template. Uh, I've deployed the templates which I already created. For example, this is the template which I created. And, uh, and uh, if I go to this one, you can select the, what is the template. And the template is identify continuous production decrease. and uh, it will show you some fields what to fill. For example, the time interval which we, the template in the business tool, will show is in the form-based manner, and you can fill those fields, and business users can deploy them. And uh, now we actually <coughs> uh, we are coming into a last section of the demo actually. How to deploying uh, the deploying a uh, stream processor? We discuss about how to write the stream processor and how to template that. Now it's a matter of how to deploy the stream processor. And we actually have two type of main deployments. One is the uh, HA deployment, two node HA deployment, which allow you to uh, achieve a considerable amount of TPS with just two nodes. And uh, <coughs> in this deployment, you don't require any other third-party tools, but only going with the two-node deployment, you can achieve the HA and it allows you to go with the zero downtime and zero event loss. And uh, we have uh, uh, incremental snapshot approaches for the stream process as well, because stream process stateful server. We have an in-memory state. Then we need to persist that state uh, uh, to recover from any sudden failure. Then since we have two nodes, we have uh, they ha each and every node has its own uh, persistent 
um, way and uh, they persist those uh, states in an incremental manner. They will not persist the complete uh, states every time. It only persists the delta of the state over the time. And based on that, if the service goes down, one service back, it can start from the last persisted uh, state and works from there. <coughs> The other one is the distributed deployment with Kafka. And, uh, and actually, <coughs> Kafka is uh, used as a manager for a distributed deployment. And uh, what you have to do is, as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> you have to write a simple <coughs> streaming app where you uh, write the streaming query. And what you have to add is you have to add some annotations to tell about how to distribute that uh, distributed pro processing. For example, here, you mentioned has <coughs> uh, uh, the first query distribute parallelly into four specific into four, and you are defining as an execution group as GP1, and we have another query where I do does the actual the pattern uh, recognition. If you check the top part, it's simply do a filtering. The down part is simply doing a sum <coughs> sum based aggregation over last one minute. There are two different independent. Queries. Now, what we are doing is we are running the first query into four separate parallelly, and we are running the last second query into two parallel execution. The main reason we are, why we are running in the four nodes is if the incoming rate is very high, we need to handle that incoming rate, right? Then we need more nodes. Then we are, what we are doing is we are uh, scaling our receiving or filtering part, and uh, after doing the filtering, there will be a less amount of data. Then we have only two nodes, which does the, uh, the aggregation portion. And uh, I have actually a, <coughs> a demo, actually, uh, which, which I recorded. And here, actually, what you can see is we have deployed a distributed node where we have a worker. And... Uh, <coughs> and uh, we have a worker, and we have a, <coughs> a dashboard server, dashboard node, and also we have two manager nodes, and also we have a few Kafka nodes to manage the deployment. And here, actually, why we are managing two manager nodes are, manager nodes are the responsible parties which to distribute the, uh, to divide the single Siddhi app into multiple, uh, small Siddhi apps and deploy into multiple nodes here. And if you check here, <coughs> uh, this is the one of the manager's uh, node. And, uh, and uh, this is the workers' profile. All the workers and managers are started now. And, uh, <coughs> and also the dashboard also started and it's up and running. And uh, now we are going to the uh, status dashboard, which I already explained to see the uh, deployment. And uh, once I'm logged into the node, um, status dashboard, I'm adding the uh, manager nodes, uh, Austin port, to the, uh, this wizard. After adding that, manager nodes knows about all the workers which connected to that. Because of that, it gives you information about the, all the workers. The, what we added was only the first manager, which is the active manager. Uh, and we have, and uh, since Active Manager nodes knows about all the worker nodes, worker nodes are simply dummy. They don't talk each other. You can start up different workers. And here we have worker nodes started. <coughs> and uh, if I go to the manager, from the manager you can visualize how many Siddhi apps are deployed and how they are deployed. For example, in this case. <coughs> <coughs> If you check these um, logs, you can see we have deployed the first streaming app. And uh, once we deploy the streaming app, that streaming app is deployed. Now we can see that streaming app is divided into four separate, applica four separate application and another, another two segments. Siddhi app, GP1, Siddhi and GP1, 2, GP1, 3, like it categorized to four parallel execution and again, another two parallel executions. And, uh, I think this we will help you to understand that part. <coughs> and uh, this is the query that you have where 
you have a streaming app, and you are deploying this streaming app into four parallelly. And this query is deployed into four segments. And this specific query is deployed in two segments. And this is the specific uh, view, distributed view, where the specific query is deployed into four parallel manner. And again, those outputs which come from those four parallel running Siddhi apps will be sent to another topic. From that, it goes to another two parallel execution that happens. And uh, these are the uh, actually the the mini, mini Siddhi apps that created by the manager and deployed in that specific workers. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, ex explains about how the uh, distributed processing working. And uh, let's say we have, I mentioned we have, you need to have manager. Manager is mandatory for a distributed deployment. And uh, you can start any number of uh, worker nodes. Worker nodes are dummy. They don't have any information about each of them. But each and every worker needs to know the manager. Uh, you, you have to provide, if you have two managers, you have to provide both managers' information to the worker. Then based on the active manager, it connects to that and get the information. And it talks with each, it only talks with the manager. The workers are not talks each other. Because of that, you can start any number of worker nodes if you want to scale because there's no dependency between the workers. It's only dependency in the, in the manager. And uh, <clears throat> now, actually, I talked about the distributed deployment. I quickly go through these few slides. And uh, <clears throat> other than that, we have support for the extensions and other tools. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we had a vast amount of connectors for the source and also syncs to receive events and to publish events. At the same time, we have different uh, extensions to do different manipulation, like uh, we have an uh, extension for the Twitter, we have extension to perform sentiment analysis, we have an uh, uh, extension to do the uh, regex-based uh, processing with the street data. Likewise, you can go to this specific location and see what are the extensions are available. Uh, this is one of the added advantage compared to the other stream processors in the current uh, industry. <clears throat> and uh, to monitor and streaming apps, I already covered uh, the st status dashboard for the distributed uh, deployment, which I mentioned. I'm not going to talk about much on that. And uh, other than that, we have inbuilt support for analytics use cases. And uh, with this, <clears throat> with WSO stream processor, we release uh, uh, inbuilt support for the uh, HTTP analytics. Uh, you, you can use the stream processor and do the HTTP analytics. It has some pre-built uh, gadgets and pre-built analytics that you can use and extend your HTTP analytics cases further. And uh, other than the HTTP analytics, uh, we also have uh, message tracing capability, uh, uh, which also ship with the stream processor. And uh, <coughs> message tracing capability which allow you to uh, see the uh, message over the time using the open tracing. And uh, it gives you more detailed information on how the message was transferred over the time. And you can also uh, use these tools and improve based on requirement. Or if it's, at, if it's OK with your requirement, then we can go ahead and use it. <coughs> and uh, yeah, other than that, we also have some pre-built analytic solution. Just look at our sites, and um, uh, we have some solutions on fina finance and banking, and also we have solution retail, location, operational uh, areas. I think Vanji had, cov Vanji had covered uh, some of these areas in how stream browsing world. Similar as we have some pre-built uh, solution, and also those solutions can be customized as your requirement as well. And uh, other than that, uh, uh, so far I talk about WS stream processor and uh, its uh, capabilities. And uh, other than that, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Siddhi is an uh, uh, engine, streaming engine, which used inside the stream processor, which actually does, which actually is the heart of the stream processor. And uh, you can, and the Siddhi engine is very lightweight. You can embed, use that in embedded devices as well. And also, it's uh, one of the use cases that we tried was in the past of using with Android devices on doing edge analytics on uh, using CD is one of the use case. And uh, you can get support for that as well, uh, for the CD to use in your devices. That's also possible. 
and uh, yeah, and uh, WS Stream Processor 420 is released yesterday, and uh, you can go and try out that and um, give us your feedback. And also, you can uh, um, join through our public mailing list and contribute to our discussions as well. I think that's all for the session. Uh, thing I have gone a bit f fast at the last because I want to cover a few sections. Uh, anyway, if I will be around today and tomorrow uh, here, and if you have any questions, we can discuss on that and we can clarify those things. Thank you. <laughs>